Next, I would like to introduce Martina Sutton, who is our fearless freedom fighter and has been leading the movement to demand the firing of Dante Servin, who shot and killed his baby sister, Rakia Boyd, in March of 2012. Martina. Peace, everybody. Peace. Let me see, where do we start here? Um, just starting, um, from, from when I was about eight, you know, I've been, how, how do you put it out? Harassed by the police. That's the first time I've been put on a police car. You know, my, my friend next to me slapped in the back of his head, told him to shut up. You know, they ran through our pockets. I mean, we come from a corner store. We don't know nothing about this. But from then on, it just happened so frequently that it was in our minds that this is supposed to happen. You know, they teach us in our urban neighborhoods how to hate each other. So when we grow up, that's what you find a majority of us doing. So if one of us starts to make it out, another one will try to pull us right back in. And this is from the results of all this police harassment and police brutality. I mean, they used to fight the police, the police used to fight them back around that. Like, me seeing this as a youngster, it looked like a game. It looked like it's supposed to happen. But as I grew up and moved out of that area, it was like, yo, wait a minute. This is not the norm. This is not how it's supposed to be. So ever since then, I've been trying to move further and further to a better place so that I can provide a better opportunity for my family, such as my baby sister. I tried to move away from the hoods where it was shooting every day, where I see people get murdered next to me, where I see people get stabbed, shot, killed, beat by the police. I used to get dropped off in gang neighborhoods and I wasn't even in a gang. You know, like this type of stuff that they put us through. But as I move further away from the neighborhood, it's just like, it just followed us. It followed us. I used to talk to my baby sister, a kid, and say, you know, we, we, we had a conversation a couple months before she passed. She came down, and I used to treat her like she was my daughter. She looked up to me. She, she always said, man, you my daddy. I didn't have a daddy in my life. I looked up to you. You looked up, you, you looked out for me. You made sure I was okay. You know, you helped me out when I was, when I really needed something. I love you for that. So she sat down and she just said, you know, bro, bro, I know it seemed like I don't listen to you, but I listen to every single thing that you say. And I'm gonna make you proud. I'm gonna make you proud, watch. And I said, every kid, I'm so hard on you because I've been through it. I've been in the streets. I know how it is. I know the streets don't have no love. And I don't want you to become a victim of the streets. She said, I know, bro. I know. That's why I'm changing. I got a surprise for you. <laughs> I never got the opportunity to see that surprise. Because the day that I planned her funeral on was the day she supposed to left to go to a nursing school. I didn't find out a day before when I finally caught up with a friend that was on the scene. I mean, she was just crying her eyes out. She was just crying and wouldn't stop. I'm like, Ike, what's wrong? She said, man, we get supposed to leave tomorrow. We got our tickets already. She wanted to surprise y'all. That hurt me so bad. Cut me so deep. Because it seemed like every time we try to take a step further towards something positive, it comes something negative to try to push us back to, to whatever they want us to be. You know, so many thoughts came to my head like, how can this happen? How can we stop it? Because to be honest, my eyes wasn't open until my baby sister got killed. Like I said, this was the norm to me. I was used to it. I thought it happened, it's supposed to happen. It was the way of the world. But when my baby sister got killed, I found out that, no, nah, that's a false reality. It's a false reality that we all was living in, that we was all made to live in, you know? 
every day I see her picture, this is what gives me strength. For folks that don't know, a quick story of the events that happened that night. Enjoying herself in a park, 75 degree weather. I mean, that is remarkable for Chicago. Like, we can't even walk around in shorts in April, May, <laughs> let alone barely June. It just started getting hot in Chicago. And so she was enjoying herself, about 100 people in a park. On her way to the store, they encountered an off-duty officer, unmarked, well, in his personal bid, what is that? And a Mercedes Benz. He's coming down the alley. They stopped, had words with two of the guys. As he turned the corner out the alley, he stopped his vehicle, and one of the guys said, what's your crackhead ass want? I told you we don't have no drugs. That's when he pointed his arm out the window and started shooting. Now they say it was five shots, but I had the opportunity to talk to this officer. He told me he shot out the car about four or five times, then got out his car and continued shooting. But yet still, they say it was just five shots that he fired blindly out the vehicle. That's no way possible. You out there for blood. You out there for blood. And his excuse for coming out the house was he got hungry. He wanted to get a burger. So you pass by all these restaurants to come in the crib for a couple of hours, then you hungry all of a sudden, almost one o'clock in the morning. I mean, come on, we all know the drill. You don't like noise. You stay right across the street from a park, directly across the street from a park, and you don't like noise? I think you need to get checked out, brother. Something is terribly wrong with you. But from that, one of the guys, Antonio Cross, got shot in his hand. My baby sister got shot in the back of the head. I did not find out. I, I got up about 6.30 in the morning, rode my bike, got in front of the TV about 7. And I'm watching the news story over and over again. 22-year-old girl shot, 39-year-old man shot. And I'm like, oh man, that's bad. I start praying. I start praying, you know, and um, I said, this, this is a crazy world. We need to stop this violence. We need to stop the killing. Three hours later, I get the knock at the door. Are you Martinez, son? And I say, yes, I am. What's wrong? Your sister, Regia boy? Yes, it is. What's the problem? She's just been a, um, well, she's been involved in a crime. I said, a crime? What she do? What she at? My first intention is to bail her out. Well, she's been shot in the head. Here's the number, here's the hospital, sorry. And they walked off my porch. <laughs> so I, I went to go look at the TV, and then I look back out my door, and I'm like, I've been watching this for the past couple of hours. And it, 10 hours passed, and this is the first time y'all had contacted us and let us know anything of what was going on? <laughs> I mean, Ever since then, I've been on a fight. And they wonder why, why are you steady fight? Why are you fighting so hard? I mean, well, wouldn't you, wouldn't you, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you continue to fight for your loved one? If it's your mother, your brother, your sister, your cousin? I mean, one thing I learned from the hood, I never learned to quit because I've been told no so many times in my life and you can't do this and you can't do that. Well, I know damn well I'm gonna make a change. We're gonna make a great change. Not only for my baby sister, but for all the victims that have fallen in these streets due to police brutality, but nah, we're not gonna stop that. Crime victims all over. I mean, we're gonna make a big change. But when we kill, <laughs> it's so hard because that, that picture on the door, that's how she was every time. Every time she walked in the room, it's hey y'all or hey girl. And every time she left, it's I y'all love y'all. So now when I talk to folks, I always say love for something similar to that nature just to show that, you know, it's nothing but love between us. Just like my baby sister taught me. She taught me to do that and taught me to get his love.
going on to the court because with the prosecutors, I had to go back and forth with the prosecutors. Being a family member and dealing with these cases, you have no choice. It's like they take all your choices away. I'm fighting with this cat. Back and forth, why can't we get murdered? Well, Martinez, um, we found that this was the better decision, and um, yes, we're gonna stick with it. Well, why is it a first degree murder? Because to me, it seemed like he intended to do it. Well, Martinez, um, this is what we came up with. I got over 24 years of experience in this, and I'm a lawyer. Are you a lawyer? I don't have to be a lawyer to have common sense. Anybody can read a book, you know? So uh, two weeks before the trial, we, um, we get into a back and forth. You know, um, I got folks around from We Charge Genocide, BYP, Black Lives Matter, Women's All Points Bulletin, um, ISO, RevCom, Fury, yeah, all over, right? So many organizations. Um, the militant, but everybody's telling me what's going on and what they see because I'm blind. I'm blind. I can't really see what's going on. So when I present these to the prosecutor, he gets mad. He gets mad and say, are, uh, are they lawyers? That was the only response for everything. Are they lawyers? But two weeks before the trial, we, we get into it. I say, um, I'm not feeling this. He said, so what's the problem? I said, I don't have no faith in you. That's the problem. He said, well, Martinez, put it all on the table. I said, I just told you, I don't have no faith in you. Why is that? I said, because you act like you don't care about this case. And he said, well, and I said, you don't have no passion. He said, don't tell me about passion. I had a sister-in-law killed, killed on the streets four and a half years ago. It wasn't my sister, but it was a sister-in-law. So don't tell me about passion. I said, see, that's what I'm talking about. You see that passion you got for your sister-in-law? You use it for my damn sister. That's what I want you to do. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? And... <laughs> He was like, uh, he didn't have too much more to say. We're doing everything we can. I said, well, when I asked you, are we going to win this case? You tell me that.